morning guys we're on our way into the shop because we're going to be talking about a few of the suggestions that you guys have made in my last video about trying to find this elusive noise in Dale so stay tuned okay guys we are back at the shop here we've got Dale up in the air and we're getting ready to go through all the comments on that last video of trying to find the rattle in Dale but before we do that, I want to encourage you guys to hit that subscribe button. We're on our way to a goal of 5,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And if we get there, I'm going to release a video of me blowing up a PT Cruiser and possibly another vehicle. So help me get to 5,000 subscribers by going down below and clicking that subscribe button. Let's get back into the video and see if we can find the rattle. So as you can see, I got my phone out and we're going to be going through all the comments on what you guys suggested you thought the sound might be. So even though we've kind of been down this road a little bit before, there's a few suggestions on that list that I did not take into consideration, which we're going to check today. So the first one being loose exhaust. I've gone through this thing and yes, we recently put in a couple of uh, bottle mufflers here to help quiet down the blatty noise on Dale. I've gone through, I've checked all the clamps, and I've gone and made sure that none of the mufflers have hollowed out inside. So I'm pretty confident I can rule out the exhaust. Somebody also suggested that we check the fuel lines and the transmission cooler lines that run uh, up to the front, and uh, so we did that as well. All the fuel lines that run along the frame rail here are tight. I can't even move them, let alone make them make a noise. And then when we get up here to the transmission lines, well, they'll have a little bit of movement. And even as we come up front here, um, there's nothing there that's causing any rattle. I can't, I can move them a little tiny bit, but I can't make them make a noise or even visualize that they're actually touching something. A couple people have suggested wheel bearings and not that I'm opposed that wheel bearings would be the issue. When we put the lowering kit on, we checked all the wheel bearings, we repacked them, not saying that they wouldn't be bad, but the noise that I'm getting is not a consistent whirring noise or humming noise that would be, you know, common in a wheel bearing. But I did check them anyways. I grabbed a hold of them top and bottom, give them a little bit of a shake. There's very, very, very little play there, if any at all. And so I'm again, I'm confident that it's not the wheel bearings. The biggest couple of um, suggestions that people had mentioned were torque converter bolts, starter bolts, as well as heat shields. So I had already said I've gone over the exhaust, but on this particular truck, there is no heat shields per se that are uh, you know bolted to the underside of the truck. So none of that is there, so therefore it's not rattling. And somebody else even suggested the heat riser valve. When they go, uh, when they start to go bad, they get loose and they clang around. As you guys know, back in a past video, when I put the new exhaust on, I eliminated the heat riser valve, so there's not even one on the truck. And it was working, coincidentally. So anyways, we're gonna go in and we're gonna check those torque converter bolts. We're also gonna check the inspection cover that covers the torque converter and see if anything is loose there. So we've got a 3 8 socket and ratchet, and uh, we're gonna take this inspection cover off and see if there's any loose bolts. I mean, the inspection cover itself did not feel like it was loose, so. I would say no rattles there. So with our light, we can see one bolt there and we can see another one right there. And without the transmission being in neutral, I can't spin that around, but I do see a third one at the top and they do look tight. But let me put the camera down and I'm going to get up there with the pry bar and see if I can't make that flywheel make any noise. Everything seems to be tight there, so I think we're pretty confident 
that we can uh, eliminate those bolts. I'm going to grab a wrench and see if I can get it on those two there. And uh, we'll spin the motor over, try it again on the other one. So uh, we'll be right back. So I did check the flywheel bolts. Everything is tight. And while I was up in there, now I'm going to kind of go back on what I said about heat shields. There's none on the exhaust as far as covering the floor pans and stuff like that. I did notice and quite frankly forgot that there is one on the passenger size uh, exhaust manifold. Let's take a look. So right up there is a heat shield that covers the manifold. Let me show you something. I'm going to rip that off there, or at least I'm going to try, and we'll take it for a drive. Because that noise sounds very familiar. So I was hoping it would be something as simple as that, and I certainly didn't mean to have it drag out into three videos, but that's about the only thing at this point that we've checked that you guys have suggested. So let me uh, get that ripped off there, and we'll check the comments and see who it was that actually said heat shields. Just a stick. Well, there we have it. That's one heat shield that's not going to make any more noise. So I think what we'll do is we'll get the inspection cover for the transmission and the bell housing put back into place. Get this thing down on the ground and take it for another rip. I'm feeling confident this time, guys, that that sound was that tin heat shield and that it's going to be gone. We'll be right back. So as you guys know, we don't have to go very far down the road. We just got to get it up to speed and get on that light throttle and we'll know whether that rattle is gone. So let's do it. Got around 45, 50 mile an hour. Very light throttle. I don't think I hear anything. Back up speed again, we'll try it one more time. So there's 50. I think we've got it. And all thanks to your guys' help for looking for something that might be so obvious that, well, you're thinking it might be something more serious. So I appreciate all the help in the comments, guys. Keep it coming. We've got one more thing checked off the to-do list here on Dale the Truck. So as I said before, guys, there is an upside to all of this monkeying around. And that is we replaced the alternator, which had a bad bearing that we didn't know about. We replaced the fan clutch, which we found out was bad. We also replaced the steady bearing in the drive shaft. So, you know, hunting for these noises and stuff like that isn't always the end of the world. Sometimes you come across some things, well, that legitimately needed to be fixed, whether that was the problem or not. So, at the end of the day, the Car Guy and Six Fan Show is still going to happen on Thursday evenings. I hope you guys can join myself and Grant Tommy, who is straight Six Fan. It is a live stream that alternates between my channel and his every Thursday evening starting at 7 o'clock Central, 8 Eastern, 9 local time. And we're just a bunch of car guys talking cars. I hope you can join into the chat and be a part of the conversation. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again real soon. 
Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're on our way into the shop to look at a few of the... Can't even talk this morning. So as you can see, I've got my phone out and we're going to be going through... These gloves don't uh, scroll very well. So we've got our 3H socket here. We're going to take this inspection cover off and see if we can see anything in there. Get this ratchet going the right way here. Get a new ratchet. Take two. So we've got our 3H ratchet here. Socket. We are at a car show on... There's a live... Folks, stay, folks, stay, folks. Wow, where'd that come from? 